Hey guys, Kerox here with another review. This time I'll be reading the GC09 Counter Rider Necrom from Counter Rider Ghost. This is the ninth entry in the Ghost Chain series and is the fourth starter set. So, this set includes two things the Counter Rider Necrom Transient Figure and the Necrom Ghost. So, let's get started. So, start off, we're going to look at Counter Rider Necrom Transient. And right off the bat, you can see that he looks much different from Ghost Transient and Spectre Transient and even Toko and Transient. Starting from the top, we can see that the head has the same basic shape as the others, but you'll notice that for the face, well, it has the same silver compound pattern. It also has a large eye in the center. This is the same eye pattern that's used for the ghost icons. That's by extension a Ganma eye, with the Ganma being the enemies for the series. Going down to the body, we can see that the base is basically the white in the center, with the black parts being armor add-on. On the upper part of the chest, you see the symbol for Connor Necrom, which is on the top rather than underneath, similar to Tokon, painted in black. And additionally, there is this small clear layer on top of the chest for the pectoral area that has basically white paint on the back. And you have more white and a lot of metallic green running down the body. See these gaps where the green comes through, as well as these areas on the knees and ankles, as well as the wrist, that have clear green parts in And I'm going to get more into detail with that when I go over the full transmission, as with this and the ghost, there are a lot of kind of connected elements. Now on the back, there's not too much paint. You still see the details, but there's at least some white paint for the arms and legs. You have his belt, which is basically just kind of a generic Ganma belt. And then the Mega Uru Odor molded onto his left arm. Which has all detail it needs to, no paint, though unfortunately it has the Necrom Ghost Icon clearly molded in there as it's generic. And the Ghost Icons that uses to Ghost Change don't have that same pattern, so unfortunately for any Ghost Changes he makes, that is going to be a bit inaccurate, but it can't be helped. Articulation wise, it's the same as the other ghost change figures. 360 rotation of the head, rotation of the arms fully, go in and out, bicep swivel, seam joint elbows, wrist rotation, two finger, two finger joints. Waist swivel, legs go forward and back, in and out, single joint knees, thigh swivel, and ball joint ankles. Now one thing I want to point out here is that if you notice here you can see that there is some scuffs on mine. And that's basically because for the head, unfortunately they decided that because there is white paint throughout the whole figure, since the base plastic is black, for the head, they uh, had that as a black plastic piece and painted white. But because of the way the ghost changes work, where uh, there's kind of a way that the head part uh, secures into place via friction, that does cause the paint to scratch out just from regular play, which is the one flaw of this figure's design. Next we have the Necrom Ghost which is a standard hoodie like the Aura Ghost and Spectre Ghost. But there are, uh, of course, elements that make it different than those two. Starting with the head, it has the same kind of hood design, though you'll notice that it has a crease and it's a little bit larger like the hood for Toko and Boost, as this does carry over the uh, ability to fold back the hood has metallic green throughout it to match with the figure. 
also some clear green parts as well as these tubes that run down as the makeshift arms instead of the straps has a different design for the chest has painted white eyes instead of green and then you also notice that there are all these slits that are cut into both the shoulder pieces and the torso and these will come more into play when we combine it with Necrom of course it has the standard articulations for a Parker Ghost like this which is moving the shoulders around on these ball joints hinging up and down and then rotating the tubes So next, we'll equip Conrad Necrom with his Parker Ghost. Of course, the transformation is pretty simple and it's basically the same as the ones for Oridamashi and Spectre, which is uh, rotating up these tubes until they line up with the shoulder pieces. Lift up the shoulders a little bit and lift up the face. Take the figure, slide the parka right over, make sure the shoulders are pegged into place, get everything situated. And there we have Conrad Necrom. So now here's where we really kind of get into the details and how these two go together. So starting off with the head, you see that the design is quite a bit different from that of any of the forms of Ghost or Spectre. As opposed to how those two do it, where the faces are typically a kind of single flat piece. It has a, uh, it's basically all clear with a pattern drawn onto it. In this case, it's at least somewhat different, where the uh, outer part of the face is black, and then the center is this set of goggles that create a visor over the single eye. And you also have the horn, which has a couple of different layers. The first part being this white part that goes up the ridge of the head and then the horn which is a metallic green with black on the sides and this is a little bit better if we pull back the hood you can see that you can now you see the full head a lot better and see the different details going down the buy-in kind of getting to the whole thing of the different motifs. The first is that thanks to the slits in the parka, you can see the metallic green parts showing through. And these are basically an indicator as Connor Necron runs on this liquid energy that's basically flowing through his body. And that's why he has these tubes which are Talbot circular. And those act as an indicator for how long he can stay transformed. As in the show, when he's running out of power, the green color will completely fade from his suit. And then all over, there are of course these clear parts, and what's supposed to be in there are eyes, basically giving him an eye motif. So in that way, the parka and base fader basically really match up as if the parka is meant to complete the suit whereas with the other two riders the parka ghosts are just there to just kind of complete their look 
and give them something to wear and give them a face. And that's definitely an interesting dynamic to Necrom. If we compare them to Ghost, see that they do look a little bit similar in terms of at least the hood and some of the ways that the parka structure goes. But you can see that the way they're lined is a bit different. Where for Necrom, the lapels have lining, but then that line doesn't really extend downwards. Whereas with Ghost and by Sentinel Spectre, the uh, orange lines or blue lines go down and then kind of wrap around the edges of the suit. Giving them a different feel to each other. Or a different feel from each other. And even with the horns, you can see that with Necrons, it's a lot straighter and more like an antenna. Whereas with ghosts, it's a lot more wispy. And then, of course, there are the differences with the bodies to where, with Ghost and Spectre, they have a basic kind of natural look to them with not too many armor bits. Whereas for Necrom, the whole suit looks like it's made of armor plating. And, of course, there is still articulation that you can get out of him, and the shoulder pads generally move pretty well with the arms. That's not too much of a problem. And the sides of the parka don't get in the way too much as well. And of course, with this being a ghost change series figure, you can do ghost changes with other parkas. So in this case, I'll swap the uh, ghosts for uh, Spectre and Necrom. Of course, we'll take off both ghosts. Put the Necrom ghost on Spectre. Which is a little bit tricky because of the design and how this is made more for Spectre than Ghost or Necrom. And then the Spectre Ghost on Necrom. Now the reason why I swapped these two is because of this. This is something that comes into play in the show. This is Conrad Spectre Necrom, which is Spectre with the Necrom Ghost icon in his belt, and thus under the control of the normal user of the Necrom icon. So as you can see, it now has the standard pattern through the visor. And it almost looks kind of unnatural for Spectre to have this on him. So it kind of does give the feeling like this is an unnatural form and that he's being taken over. Which is the case in the show. And then on the other hand, this could theoretically be called Conrad Spectre Necrom. And with this it looks also kind of strange because the white of the uh, chin part sticks out a lot more with the face of the uh, Spectre Ghost. Thankfully, because of the way the face is done, you don't see too much of the mono eye beneath it. And this kind of gives you an idea of how uh, the 
Necron figure does add a new dynamic to the Ghost Chain series to where putting a Necron style ghost on Ghost or Spectre gives them a much different dynamic and it would look to them and the same thing would happen if you would give one of their ghosts to Necrom. So in that way, it adds a kind of dynamic that you didn't get with the other three figures, which I think is quite a plus. And there we go. So overall, I think that Connor Necrom is probably the most impactful addition to the Ghost Chain series so far. The base body looks a lot different and is much changed from the past ones and it has more layers to it making it look more a bit more impressive compared to the other ones where they were mostly just a single solid color with some marks of a secondary color but with this you have the unique layers and different layers of the white black and green and you also have the ways in which the Fear and the park ghosts really go together well because you can kind of see the ways that they're made for each other with how the park ghost has elements that are also found on the figure to make to really make it look like it's supposed to be there. And as said before, it also adds a new dynamic to the ghost changes to where you can start to, you can basically start to get things looking more unique and more different with the addition of this sphere and this party ghost into the mix. Additionally, it does bring back the nice hood pullback feature from the token boost sphere, and I personally hope that at some point in the future, Bandai, perhaps through their web shop, releases new versions of the Aura Ghost and Spectre Ghost that are changed to have that feature. Just because it's a nice addition that does make the figure look more show accurate. So overall, I'd say that if you're collecting the Ghost Chain series, this is definitely a must-buy if you have one of the other base figures. So next time, I'll be reviewing the Yokai Watch U1 kit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and or subscribe. And check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash krx50. And for now, this is krx50, riding off.